Perfect. Well, tell me a little bit about what happens if you do start feeling jealous. If uh, your husband is looking at a young 25 year old, you were like, wait a second. Hey, what about me? That could happen. happen at Starbucks. Ha! Good point. Hi, it's Karen Lee of Love Encore. Welcome to my show via Skype with Nancy Sutton Pierce, the Jamaica lover he know. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to be jealous, I, I wouldn't recommend it for people who are who know that about themselves. Right. They can't go into public with their partner without feeling jealous. Right. Then do not go to hedonism. I mean, what if it steps beyond just the looking and now there's touching involved? I mean, that doesn't usually happen at Starbucks. It, and it doesn't happen at hedonism accidentally either. Some of the pictures look like that. That's why I was I, wondering I what really goes on there. That's The pictures they, can be deceiving. It is advertised as a much more sexually aggressive place. That's why I guide a lot of people as to which week to go to because every week has a different personality. So, it's, so is it geared more towards women or men? I think it's geared more towards women. So women are, rule there. Really? Almost every time I've been there, there's been one guy that is, is labeled as a hunter. He stands out like a sore thumb. He thinks that every woman there wants to have sex with him. He's quickly schooled. Yeah, but I'm sure he has probably gotten lucky a few times. Probably not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they usually go and complain to the management because they're not getting laid. This <laughs> is false advertising. Yeah, and the management says, well, how do you normally do at home? Are you pretty lucky at home? And they go, well, no, that's why I came here. And they said, well, if you aren't getting lucky at home, you're not going to get lucky here because it's you. <laughs> so what are some of the wilder experiences you've had? I think the, the nude hot tub at night can get a little crazy. You can, you'll see everything thing there. I mean, uh -huh. there are a lot of people that love to have sex outdoors. That's and totally fine. At night, the, on the nude side, it's where it's a little bit isolated. Yeah, you kind of turn a blind eye to uh -huh. it. The rule is no public sex. Oh, and that includes all forms of sex. If people are discreet or it's at the nude hot tub, I mean, you know, it's a sexy place. People get amorous. Like if you're in a hot tub and there's all kinds of bodily fluids coming out, I mean, that's kind of like, eh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yeah, be honest. I don't get in the hot tub. It does sound very um, provocative just to yeah. watch what goes on in there and then go back yeah. to your, uh, you know, room or whatever. There's a lot of stimulation to the mind, as you and I both know. That's the biggest sex organ. Totally, the, it probably carries you out throughout the year. Then some of the memories that you've made over there. Absolutely, being free to dress. I see how you dress. <laughs> And I would not dress that way at home. No, know? not in front of your kids and grandkids, that's for sure. Oh. Your, your daughter walks in, what are these pasties doing, Mommy? <laughs> exactly. Well, my granddaughter did get into my closet one day and came oh. out with one of my little sliced little dresses on. I mean, I got to say, you look really hot in your outfits, that's for sure. Thank you. So I would bet that any given week, less than half of the people there are into swinging lifestyle. But there are definitely people there that are in the swinging lifestyle. Yeah, and you just have to learn how to act. Because people ask me all the time, we are swingers. We want to go. How do we know who's a swinger? And I say, just ask. Are there little name tags? Yes. Yeah. Swinger, yes. Well, thumbs some, up, some, thumbs sometimes. down. Sometimes. No, because there would be no place to put the name tag. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some some groups that that give wristbands different colors for really? different, different it... preferences. So the first time we went to hedonism, we had no clue about any of the lingo. All these couples took us under their wing to you know because we were just you know our fresh our meat. <laughs> fresh meat. So we didn't know what the life what the word lifestyle meant. Um, we didn't know what soft swap. Give us a quick uh, rundown of what these things mean. The lifestyle actually encompasses all of us who are a little bit more free spirited. For example, if you if you're not afraid to be naked or you don't mind seeing naked people, that kind of puts you in the lifestyle category. If you could go to an adult resort and if somebody was having sex and it didn't offend you and make you run screaming to your mother, then you would be considered <laughs> lifestyle friendly. Exhibitionist, voyeur, you just if you want to have sex, I mean all it, it can run the gamut. Soft swap, I think they're they call that if anything but penetration. Wait, soft swap. So what are you swapping? Oh uh, part Partners. Oh, so, okay. So, what's left? <laughs> what does that mean? Holding hands? Really? Kissing is, is that penetration? Oral sex, kissing, fondling, sw switching partners, being in the same room, but everything except penetration. Okay, even though your mouth is being penetrated by a, a penis. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> no vaginal or anal penetration by any any, any penis. That's I not, guess we have to be that, specific. That's not soft swap. That would be a hard swap. <laughs> you hope it's hard. If it's not hard. It's no swapping at all. If you're in a designer marriage or designer relationship. Now what's that? Two of you have come together and you've mapped out what you want your relationship to be. And you let go of all your preconceived ideas about what is a relationship, what is a marriage, what your parents did, the rules. Sure, what did society says. Do you so, write it out in a contract or do you, is it no, just I an oral thing? we talked about it over the years. We've been together for 28 years. Does it get modified over the years? Oh, of course. I think every time we have a conversation, we tweak it. We're always evolving. So it's always being adapted to who we are. What happens if one of you two wants to venture a little further than the other? We would have to have an agreement that that would be okay. Because once you cross that line, it's really hard to go back, I think. We have... We have a couple of very strict rules. No deception. There are. There's nothing that we can't say. Okay. We've made it a, a very clear playing field that there are no deal breakers. We are very committed. We're we are emotionally very monogamous. We're not into polyamory. You know, we don't want other people in our relationship. Examples from money, sexuality to career. We support each other in being fully who we are. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that many couples are like that, and that's probably what makes your marriage so strong because. I I don't think a weaker partnership marriage relationship could handle all the temptations that are out there, especially right. when you add alcohol into the mix too. Temptations are very temporary. It's like you go to a buffet part yes. and you go, oh my gosh, those all look so good. And then you go home and you forget about the dessert cart. Right. And you decide you eat the, the ice cream bread that's in your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't had a situation where you've seen this incredibly hot guy and you wanted to have sex with him and you went to your husband and said, hey, I, I'm thinking of having sex with this guy that's not happened oh that's happened a lot yeah I'm, I'm, always, I'm, I'm always thinking about having sex Nancy, thank you so much for this phenomenal interview jamaica then lvr keto they can find me on facebook yeah, yeah. check her out on facebook and of course subscribe to my channel karen lee Potter here on youtube and comment on this video and we love you all Bye.